The restaurant kitchen was silent in the wee hours of the night, save the plink, plink, plink of a dripping faucet at the sink. Not a creature was stirring, not even a rat, until such a rodent emerged from a sink drain in a rather unhygienic state at that. The moment she exited the drain, the sumptuous scents of the restaurant hit her like a tsunami. Her sensitive nose feasted on the faint aromas of wondrous recipes prepared the day prior. She could also smell traces of another rat. Not a concern, probably an intruder like herself, who had recently departed. Too bad the delightful meals had long been served to the eager diners. However, there were other options. Her nose had already picked up a produce storage area packed with goodies. It was enough to draw a growl from her empty stomach. Okay. Okay, focus. She told herself as she secured the rodent-sized crossbody back on her shoulder. Just do what you came here to do. <laughs> and what had triggered her squeal? The sight of her own reflection in the sink's silver-sized surface, lit by street lights streaming through the window. Looking like the living embodiment of all that was icky, she had no idea she was that. That. You! How in the world has she not realized? Oh, right. Her perfume. Even with her sensitive nose, the perfume had almost masked the grimy scent. In fact, this perfume could override the most unpleasant odors. It was one of her secret recipes, and she was very proud of it. The only ways to get it off were a chemical cancelling agent and lots and lots of time. To think. This perfume was just a primer to prepare her for a much greater creation. Yes, with her impeccable aroma, she had actually tricked herself into forgetting how filthy she really was. In the past few days, she had done little to take care of herself. Always so busy, always so hurried, but so, so close to her goals. However, her goals would have to wait a few minutes. If she remained in this state much longer, she would be morally obligated to throw herself into the trash. Soap. She needed soap, and already she could identify several different cleaning agents at the sink's side. Such variety! Clearly this was no ordinary kitchen. Some of the soaps were almost lavish. Forget the dishes. They would disinfect a dirty rat like her and double as excellent shampoos and conditioners for her fur, if combined to the right proportions. She leaped onto the edge of the sink and pulled herself to the top before grabbing the stopper and heading back down to plug the drain. After returning to the tabletop, she turned on the water, climbed a few soap bottles, popped them open, and poured them into the filling sink with laborious effort but perfect precision. Upon attaining the right combination of soaps and water, she dove into the basin, marinated a little, and rinsed to her heart's content. After her bubble bath, she sprang out of the basin, gave a quick shake, and got to work. Once she somehow got a pot onto a burner, easier said than done, she began the long process of filling it with water cup by cup. However, she found creative ways to make the job much quicker and easier than it could have been. After about 10 minutes, the pot was full, and she switched on the stove until it simmered. Standing above it on an overlooking shelf, she reached into her crossbody bag and pulled out a transparent orb filled with multicolored liquid. Once she dropped it into the pot, she waited. But absolutely nothing happened. Huh. She commented. I guess I had the wrong- Suddenly, a blast of colorful fumes erupted from the pot, causing her to jump back and laugh with delight. <laughs> Now we're talking! She cheered. Her ears twitched in response to a sound. What was that? A gasp? Her eyes darted about to ascertain the source of the sound, but there was nothing there. She began to second-guess her hearing, but at the back of her mind there was still that scent of another rat. It was much less musty than that of any other rat she'd smelled. That rat couldn't still be in the room, right? His scent was just simply too... mild. Shaking the concerns from her head, she scurried across the shelf, stopping when she caught sight of her reflection in a piece of silverware. Oh, hello! She said to her reflection. I haven't seen you under that filthy fluff for days. Still rocking that weird red fur, I see. That's, while I can't say it's great, so I'm just gonna say weird because it is what it is. Anywho, after tonight, I'll actually have a life and I won't need to keep talking to you as if I'm suffering from multiple personality disorder. Super, right? 
Much to her shock, her reflection answered back. You've been giving me that optimistic nonsense for months. You'd better get the formula right this time. Otherwise, you're going to keep crawling back to me for company. Get a grip. You are talking to your reflection. To make matters worse, your reflection's talking back. Your desperation is destroying your sanity. Get the formula right and get a life. I don't want to have to say this again. With that, her reflection stomped out of sight, leaving her dazed and confused. Okay, the red rat told herself. Best case scenario, I'm not as immune to my hallucinogenic chemical concoctions as I thought. Too much got into my system and is making me see things. Worst case scenario... You're losing your mind! Her reflection interrupted as it darted back onto the silverware, finishing her sentence. Go! Get those night howlers before this becomes a regular thing! Go, go, go! Okay! Okay, I'm going! She scampered across the shelf en route to the night howlers, conveniently located at the far side. Hey! Came an unfamiliar masculine voice. She froze. Oh no, now my reflection's starting to sound like a dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not your reflection. The voice responded. Slowly, tentatively, she turned to see a lean blue rat about a yard behind her. <laughs>